This is video 16 in our series, uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. Um, a reminder that the uh, playlist for all the videos is featured at the website digital-university.org. Now, in this video, we're going to consider uh, some of the general transformation properties of the uh, metric tensor, where we have two curvilinear coordinate systems. Uh, the U1 with axis U1, U2, U3, and so forth. Then over here a different set of curvilinear coordinates. We designate these as U prime one, U prime two, U prime three, and so forth. Now we had a couple of videos ago demonstrated that the metric tensor can be expressed as the dot product of two tangential vectors. Here we're in the U coordinate system. Then over here in the U prime system, we would have it as J prime. That would be equal to E and then what we're going to have is prime i dot e prime j. Now, before, when we originally wrote the metric tensor, um, if we were going to be consistent, we would say u, then here we'd say u prime. But we can sort of leave that out and just say prime and umprime. Uh, realizing that it's the variable u in each case here, u and u prime. So this means u, this means u prime here. Now, this we can rewrite in video 10. We had shown that this is equal to the partial of uk with respect to u prime i times ek. And we had derived this formula um, in video 10. So that if we know one of the tangential vectors here in the u curvilinear system, then we can find its counterpart over in the prime curvilinear system. And here we're taking these partial derivatives, but because we know how to transform, we know the equations that transform u to u prime and u prime to u, because we know those equations, we can therefore take this partial derivative. And yes, we'd be summing over this repeated index, where here it's upper and here it's lower. Now for e prime j, we can write a similar expression. We could say that that will equal, now here, instead of having u prime i, we'd have u prime j, then we have partial of u, and then e, and these indexes have to match, so let's just call this, say, l. The repeated index that we sum over. So that means then that g i prime j can be written as the dot product of these two vectors. So let's do that. We have g prime i j equals this dot this. So we have the partial of u k with respect to u prime i times this, the partial of u l with respect to u prime j. And then we have e k dot e l. But this, 
would be the metric tensor G K L. So let's write this in place of this. And this gives us then how we would transform a metric tensor from the unprimed system, that is, from the U system, to find the metric tensor in the U prime system over here in this curvilinear system. This is the formula for doing it. Now, in video number five, we demonstrated the general transformation patterns for contravariant tensors and covariant tensors. This has subscripts here, and same thing here. So does this, in fact, transform uh, with the same pattern as a uh, covariant tensor does? So let's look at this. Now for G prime, we have U primes here. So that means we're going to be taking partial derivatives of U prime. One partial derivative will have an I label. One partial derivative of U prime will have the J label. Now, if this is transforming according to the pattern of covariant transformation for tensors, then the U prime partial of u prime that has the i label and the partial of u prime that has the j label, that will appear in the denominator over here, if it indeed is a covariant transformation, because it's a subscript here. And indeed, we see that that is what happens. Now, over here on this side of the equation, we have g, k, l, which means we're going to take partial derivatives of u and one of the partial derivatives of u will have a k label and one will have an l label. And indeed if this is a covariant transformation then these are going to be a repeated index and they're downstairs here so they're going to be repeated index they have to appear in the numerator over here which is exactly what they do. We have the repeated index, upper, lower, the repeated index, upper, lower. These subscripts appear in denominators over on this side, and that's exactly the pattern as we, noted, as we noticed in video number five for uh, a covariant transformation um, of a tensor, of a covariant tensor. So this does have the subscripts that a covariant uh, tensor has, and indeed, it transforms exactly as a covariant tensor transforms. Or more, uh, more correctly, would say this one does. That this is the one that we have. That it, we perform this operations on it, and we get its corresponding uh, counterpart over in the uh, primed uh, curvilinear system. But indeed, uh, these metric tensors then that we have with the lowercase labels, in fact, do transform uh, as uh, covariant tensors do. Now, we also, in some of the earlier videos, it was either video 12 or video 13, where we considered G I J uppercase, and we said that is equal to E I dot E J uppercase. And uh, back in videos eight and nine, when we discussed reciprocal um, uh, vector systems, we defined what these mean. What these are, these are not vectors that are tangent to the uh, coordinate axis at a particular point, rather they would be orthogonal. And over here, we write a similar expression, g prime ij. And here I'm not going to bother putting the bars on these vectors, but 
indeed they're vectors, then over here this would be equal to e prime i dot e prime j. And again, these are perpendicular to a particular set of coordinate axes here. Okay, now again back in video number 10 we had demonstrated that e prime i we can write like this the partial of u prime i with respect say to uk e no this is not e prime k this is just ek like this so if we know one of the orthogonal vectors in the u curve of linear system then we know how to find its counterpart here in the u prime curve of linear system and for this e prime j it's a similar expression then that would be the partial of u prime not i but in this case it carries the label j and that would be then with respect to u e and again these have to be repeated indexes here so we can just call this for example l and that would be then again if we had a particular um, one of the orthogonal vectors in the u-curve linear system this would be how to find its counterpart in the u-prime curve linear system now we have this is equal to the dot product of these so we can say then that g prime ij will equal the dot product of these and this is the partial of u prime i with respect to uk times this the partial of u prime j with respect to ul then we have e k dot e l but this is the metric tensor g k l so let's write this in place of this so here again this is telling us that if we know a metric tensor that's in the u coordinate system now we know how to find the metric tensor in the u prime coordinate system that's this equation now here this has upper components so does it indeed transform though uh, the way that a covariant uh, tensor transforms so let's look at it here we have here we know we're going to be taking partial derivatives of u prime this is the u prime system that's what the prime here indicates so one of those u prime partial of u primes it's going to have an i label the other is going to have a j label these are superscripts here so if this indeed is the pattern of contravariant transformation then these have to appear in the numerator on this side of the equation which indeed they do now here these are upstairs and we're going to be taking partials now with respect to u because without a prime here that means then that we're in the u curvilinear coordinate system and now one of the partials with respect to u has a k the other has an l and 
if this is a contour variant transformation, then these have to be repeated indexes, so they have to appear down in the denominator. The ones that the partial view that has a K label and the partial view that has the L label, they have to appear in the denominator like this, which is exactly where they do appear, so that we have the upper lower, the upper lower repeated index that indeed is the hallmark of uh, contravariant transformation. So these uh, metric tensors that we form with the upper labels from these definitions here, they do indeed transform with the pattern uh, of what contravariant tensors transform. Here we have a, a metric tensor and the U system. This is how we find its corresponding metric tensor in the U prime system. And again, the pattern here is identical um, to a contravariant transformation as we first identified that back in video number five, where these here are repeated indexes. So they're upper here. So I see them again. They have to appear on a denominator, and they do. These appear upper over here, so that when we see them again, they have to be in a numerator on the other side of the equation, and indeed, they are. So that's the pattern of contravariant transformation. So the metric indexes that we have demonstrated earlier to be defined like this have these lower components. Indeed, they transform as a covariant tensor. And the ones that we defined having superscripts like this indeed these do transform along with the pattern of covariant tensor transformation so these are covariant tensors and these are contravariant tensors these two different forms of expressing uh, the metric tensor Okay, that's all I want to say for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to introduce the subject of Christoffel symbols. So come back and join us for that video, and we'll continue along with our discussions.